All right, so after an unplanned successful first video of top five failed sneaker technologies, I wanted to go ahead and make a follow-up video with more suggestions from you guys. And also FYI, I did not know that Reebok ZigTech was such a coveted sneaker by y'all in school. That comment had me cracking up the entire time. In this video, I wanna go ahead and discuss five more failed sneaker technologies. What is going on guys, Hess here, CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals that I posted on Twitter, check the link in the description and happy shopping. Uh, one note before we get started in this video, I just wanted to let you guys know that this is basically just by opinion. Everybody else kind of contributed from the other video and let me know of other failed sneaker technologies. So I thought that was awesome. Appreciate you guys for leaving those comments. Again, do so in this video because some of them were mentioned and I did not feature in this video. Also, if you guys want to see a video on the top five best sneaker technologies on the market, I can do that video. Leave a comment in the comment section or give this video a thumbs up if you guys want to see that video. But without waiting any further, let's go ahead and jump into the top five. So the number five spot goes to the British Knights Dimacell. And if you guys don't remember these shoes, I definitely do because I had a pair way back in the day. The shoes actually came out in 1991 and the technology consisted of diamond shaped silicone cushioning embedded within the sole window. And this was basically a way to effectively absorb shock by dispersing vertical impact energy into a horizontal plane while maximizing energy return. Dimacell maintains the memory after repeated compression, so it says, but it was very gimmicky and basically it looked like Nike Air and it definitely didn't play like Nike Air. And honestly, you really couldn't feel the reaction or any, any sort of technology in the shoe. It just looked like sort of a mock of what Nike Air was trying to accomplish. Fun fact though, MC Hammer actually signed an endorsement deal with British Knights back in 1990. Also, these were gang affiliated to some extent by the Crips because they were known as BKs, AKA the blood killers. So not a really good look for the brand. All right, so the number four spot goes to the Adidas Mega Bounce that released, I believe, in 2008. 100% honest, it was actually difficult to find some origins to this failed technology. I do remember seeing it, however, when I go to Goodwill, sometimes I end up seeing some of these. But this technology was definitely something that looked really interesting. Oddly enough, it looks like this failed technology happened before the evolved spring blade, possibly. Uh, there's some characteristics that definitely look the same on the more evolved versions. And the funny part is um, also that it is called Bounce Technology when I found it on like Amazon, which it's available right now on Amazon. But obviously now Adidas has a different technology that they coin as Bounce, not this Mega Bounce version. Anyways, this technology was supposed to have a lot of heel cushion and making it so you had impact that turned into forward momentum. All I know is it looks really funky and uh, all in all, I think this definitely qualifies for a failed sneaker technology because it didn't really have a long shelf life on the open market. The number three spot we have the Converse Helium technology. You guys actually mentioned this one in the other video and I appreciate you guys because I honestly do not even remember this hitting the shelves. This one released in 1999 and this one basically took a direct shot at Nike because the atomic weight of helium is lighter than air. So they thought why wear air on your feet when you can be even lighter and lighter on your feet and wear helium. I'm not making this stuff up. Converse brought this to the market in 1999 but the sales for this product was really really minimal and it proved that basically Nike even though it was heavier was nothing to be messed with. Something worth noting is that Converse was actually purchased by Nike in 2003 so if you can't beat them join them. The number two spot goes to the LA Gear Catapult, which was released in 1991. And the LA Gear was basically the equivalent of Jordan's back then. This actually was a high-end basketball shoe that was uh, brought to the market from LA Gear. It featured a high collar, as you can see, and also had a power feedback system that was supposed to allow you to catapult upwards and make you jump higher. You can see that it had a catapult heel spring. They also had a clear heel on the bottom, which looked pretty cool. They also had an air cavity. They had a whole bunch of tech that they called out on this shoe, but unfortunately it was just pretty much a flop. And actually there was a basketball player that on live TV, his shoe fell apart. So it was a really terrible look for LA Gear. The original spokesperson for the catapult was Carl Malone, the mailman, but it was a big move back in the day for a performance basketball shoe. Unfortunately, uh, it just didn't have lasting power. And a fun fact, Mark Goldston, who was actually a co-creator of the Reebok Pump and LA Gear Lights and Hexalite, his son was the founder of APL, which was a sneaker that was also banned from the NBA with similar technology as the Catapult. <laughs> All right, so we made it to the number one spot on the video countdown. And if you guys are enjoying the content, please take a moment and hit that thumbs up button. I'll go ahead and wait for you guys. Are you guys good? Thank you guys for doing that. And let's go ahead and get into it. The number one spot goes 
to the Skechers Shape Up. Now I know this isn't like a performance shoe, but you can't really talk about fails without mentioning Skechers Shape Ups. Skechers Shape Ups released in 2009 and sold for about $100 a pair. A lot of people bought these things. They paid out a $40 million settlement on these toning shoes uh, because this lawsuit basically said that they deceived consumers. Shape Ups basically told the consumers that they shaped you up while you walk and you can get in a shape without setting foot in a gym. They said that the shoes are designed to promote weight loss and muscle tone. The FTC said, nope, that's not true. And they also had two different celebrities backing this brand, Kim Kardashian and Brooke Burke. By the way, what happened to Brooke Burke? She used to be awesome. During the 2011 Super Bowl, Kim Kardashian actually showed herself dumping her personal trainer for a pair of shape ups. Because of all that craziness, I definitely say that this is the number one failed technology. If you guys agree or disagree, leave a comment in the comment section. You guys did mention a couple runner ups though in the previous video, so I wanted to go ahead and show you guys a couple of those runner ups. There's definitely been a lot of failures from Adidas and Reebok both through the years, but obviously as you try to innovate, there's gonna be some failures. So I wanna throw that out there. Obviously in the last video, I mentioned the spring blade. There's also a technology known as hug. And also there was a spring loaded Porsche design that was super bizarre, super heavy and uh, another one that would probably be considered a fail. Reebok also had the pumps, the ATVs, and the DMX, along with the Hexalite. Pumps, I personally don't think is a fail, but I mean, it is what it is. You can look at it from different sides of the spectrum. And also K-Swiss had a technology called tubes that I thought looked really bizarre. Anyways, that is all we have for this Top 5 Tuesday video, and hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you guys enjoyed the content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my videos go live. Also, if you guys wanna see another Top 5 Tuesday, about the top five best sneaker technologies on the market. I can do that video, plan on doing that video. I think it'll be a fun one. And there's another one that I thought of, top five forgotten sneaker brands. If you guys wanna see either of those two, leave those comments in the comment section. I definitely monitor those comments and try to deliver content that you guys are requesting. So thank you guys for those that are active in the comment section, active with that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. If you guys are trying to watch other videos on my channel, go ahead and click them on the screen at this time. Have a good rest of your Tuesday and we'll catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace guys.